Welcome to the Muxall Open IoT channel. I am your host, Michael Crane. Okay, so we're um, going to take a look at this igniter. This igniter was was uh, reported to be popping the GFCI, which is a ground fault circuit interrupt. And also, uh, uh, he reported that it, it popped the breaker. Okay, and... And um, they may be related, but I, I don't think so. Usually a GFCI pops. I mean, it could pop under load if it's got too big of a load, but usually the uh, GFCI pops if there's a, if for some reason your neutral is getting bypassed and it is getting shorted to ground. And when I was doing my testing, I didn't, I didn't see any problems on mine, but I think I think we might have a problem and I'm going to zoom in here. What we got here is Sorry, I'm I'm trying to do this through the camera. So if you see right here, I I've been kind of poking around with my screwdriver, but I noticed there was some melt this is heat shrink right here. And and the spring, if you remember, uh goes right through here to to hold it to the burn pot, right? And I noticed it was melted a little bit where the spring was touching uh, this heat shrink. And like I said, when I was testing it, I tested it for eight hours and didn't have any problems. And so I didn't think anything about it. But, you know, testing and real life scenarios are two different things, right? So anyway, I, I see it had, it had melted and I was looking at it through my microscope. And then I just, I just kind of dug in it because I noticed that you can see where the spring had melted the heat shrink. Um, it didn't look like it was touching the metal, but I, I dug into it a little bit and, and you could see that it was, it was super duper close. It may be close enough that it could arc across it. And that is probably what is causing the GFCIs to pop because it will detect that short. It's not enough to throw the breaker, but it'll detect that short and it will trip the GFCI. So it's doing its job. So yeah, we've got a bit of a problem with that. Okay, so for our next test, what I'm gonna do is, as this is an amp meter, I wanna check the amp draw on this igniter. People were reporting that it was uh, blowing fuses or popping breakers. So we're going to measure the uh, the amp draw on this thing. So I'm going to go ahead. Now all I'm doing is I'm just going to plug it in. It's going right into this is plugged right into the <laughs> mains power. This is just an igniter and I've got the uh, ohm meter set up. I mean sorry the amp meter. So I'm going to go ahead and plug her in. As you can see it draws pretty close to uh, 3 amps on startup and then drops down to it's getting close to two amps right now so two amps is is about 240 uh, watts right and uh, that's what the uh, manufacturer advertises 240 watts for this for this uh, or 250 watts sorry for this igniter but it does spike to about three amps or close to three amps when it when it first turns on when it's cold so and three amps is going to be about 360 watts and I'm thinking that's that's probably causing some problems <laughs> maybe I mean it's it, the controllers like the Muxall controller doesn't have any problems with it other controllers uh, seem to be having uh, some problems with this and I, like I said, and also people have been saying something about it popping the breakers. Now, three amps should not pop a breaker. <laughs> I mean, unless uh, unless you really have that thing loaded down. But um, but you know, it it's still it's 360 watts. That's that's a pretty you know that's that's like running you know three or four hundred hundred watt light bulbs, right? So uh, anyway, you can see as it gets hotter, it it drops down to about 1.5 watts. I'm sorry, amps, 
So, and that's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this. We've, we've done that test. So, there you go. I, I mean, as you can see, it, it, it does pull about three amps when it first starts up, and then it drops down pretty quick. You know, maybe 10, 15 seconds. And I'm thinking some, some controllers are just not liking that too much. Uh, unlike the Muxall, it doesn't have a problem with it. It's designed to pull up to, it, it'll allow up to 5 amps before it starts complaining. But uh, a lot of controllers may not be designed like the Muxall Pro. So there you have it. So, anyway, I, I've contacted the manufacturer and asked them about this, this initial turn-on spike. I don't think there's anything they can do, but yeah, never say never, right? So you might be asking yourself, what's the fix? You know, inquiry into the manufacturer, see what they say. Uh, but the fix for the, um, the spring touching the heat shrink right here, uh, I've, I'm going to start installing a fiberglass uh, heat shield. Okay, and I know it looks a bit ratty, but <laughs> it'll do the job. And what this will do, this heat shield is good up to ooh, 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit or something like that. It's specced out at. And, and it's kind of like if you have headers on your car and you don't want it to, um, you know, your, your spark plug wires to touch your headers. That's kind of the same stuff, right? It, it just protects your, your wires from uh, the hot headers. And that's the same thing that this thing is doing is, is as this igniter gets hot, even with the fan running, um, that spring is, has just enough thermal energy that it's, it's, it's melting into the, into the heat shrink and I think is causing the GFCI problems. I, like I said, I don't think it's directly shorting, but I think it's getting close enough where it might, where it might arc uh, across it and, uh, and cause GFCIs to, to trip. So. So that's what I'm going to do. So the people that that have these, I will either send these these heat shields out and they can install them themselves, or they can send the the burn pot and igniter back to Muxall, and we will install them for them. Okay, so there you have it. You know, problems do occur, but we will we will get everyone fixed up. I promise. Talk to you later. Don't forget, you can support the Muxall Open IoT channel by donation, using a credit card and PayPal, or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up, that helps, and hit the subscribe button, that really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.